What's up everyone? In this episode of Day Job presented by Sparesbox, Grub is going to be developing an oil cooler kit for the GR Yaris. Now with our GR Yaris doing so much track work, we decided that it needed something pretty important and that is an oil cooler kit, which obviously helps keep oil, oil temperatures in yeah. check, looks after the engine and makes everything better. Now, Grub already has an oil cooler kit for i30N under yep. the IFX brand. Yep. And you pretty much thought, what? We can make it work on this. Pretty much, it's perfect size for the front of the uh, radiator grill. So we thought, why not let's try and make it fit. So we're gonna do an oil cooler kit now. We're also yep. gonna grab another oil sample uh, yep. to see how well the engine's working and then we're gonna switch over to Nylon Race Oil. Yep. Cool. All right, over to you. All right, let's go get into it. So to start off, this is one of our i30N in oil coolers. So we already make this kit for the i30 and we thought we might be able to fit the oil cooler in and mount it in a similar way to the way we do with the i30. Over the weekend, I've pulled the car apart. Firstly, I took measurements on the car and then went on CAD and designed the brackets that we need for the Yaris, 3D printed them. Then from those 3D prints, I printed out on paper the uh, flat drawing, which I've then glued onto a piece of metal and then cut it. Um, yeah, so we're gonna fold these ones up. Uh, we'll do that in a minute. But the main thing that I like with making parts is I don't like drilling holes. The kit has to fit perfectly in the car without any compromise. So that's what we've done. Just, I'll show you how we sort of done these brackets. You can see that they're it's a very basic folded bracket, but it's a tensioner. So they slip around and go over the top. And then we have a piece of aluminum rod, which we put nut certs in each end, which come down and they clamp the bracket onto the car. So it can't move around. Then there's another nut cert, which goes in this hole here which then holds the oil cooler to it. So it means we don't have to drill any holes and it's extremely secure against the crash bar Rio. This, this is what they call a low speed impact pad. So this is for like accidents up to like five, 10 Ks an hour. So it just doesn't cave the hole of your front, front end. Uh, so it still fits in perfectly because there's a small amount of clearance between the two. So as a product, we know that from here to there is how much space we have between the front bumper bar and the crash bar. So we can put the oil cooler pretty much anywhere in this space and we won't have any um, like... Clearance issues? Yeah, we won't have any clearance issues. That's exactly it, Paulco. We won't have any clearance issues. Um, so I'm pretty excited to get the kit on there. Uh, the next thing, pretty much I've, once I finish folding up those brackets over there, we can actually bolt it on put the oil cooler on and then we'll start routing the hoses through. So this is the top, this is the top radiator ducting. So as you can see, it's quite flimsy already, but I don't want to cut it because it will make it even more flimsy. Plus it's going to affect all the airflow going into the, you know, it's channeling air in through the radiator, in a cooler, all that. So we don't want to, we don't want to wreck it, but there's a nice little gap on this side. I'll get a sample hose. Yeah. So through there means I won't have to cut it. So I've got the oil cooler here. So we're gonna have a, you can see that one's high, one's low. Uh, we've done that for oil flow, plus it made it easier to put it in the i30. Um, kind of beneficial on both ends. So we're gonna have 180 that comes around the front and runs along the bottom. We won't have to drill any holes. It's gonna be perfect. I want them to look like factory parts. So uh, we use like a texture black here so to represent or look like plastic and I personally don't like powder coating the cores because putting plastic over something that transfers heat, that's an insulator. So my opinion is that it shouldn't be powder coated. Other people might say other things, but I don't care. So what I do is actually uh, paint these with zinc gal and that actually stops the uh, core from oxidizing and, and looking over time. So it'll look clean for years, you know, that's the aim. So these are the oil cooler brackets that bolt to the end of the oil cooler. Uh, so what I like to do with my products is I powder coat them in contrasting textures. So these are going to be gloss black where the end tanks are texture black. It just makes the brackets pop and look really nice. So you see this, there's two small holes here. There's a small laser cut badge which will go on there and that's polished stainless steel. Okay, so while they're in the oven, I'm gonna go fold the rest of the brackets up. 
Okay, so this tool is not really used in my shop much anymore because we get everything CNC folded, but it's good for making little prototypes. So you might be able to see there's a couple of lines on this piece of paper. So I'll just basically line them up. Try to get that one upside down. So as you can see, it's exactly the same as the plastic version. So now we've got two of these. Hopefully they fit and I don't look like an idiot. You mean look less like an idiot? Look more or less like an idiot. Okay, so there we go. Ta-da! So now we're going to powder coat them. Oh look, Grub, there's a pink car in the background. I'm not telling you. Okay, cool. You have to wait for the later episode. So if you're wondering what I'm doing now, the, I've just washed these in like acid, so it cleans all the fingerprints off. But what I do is I put them in the oven for 15, 20 minutes just to burn all the surface oils or whatever's inside the metal out. It's called outgassing. So I outgas them for like 15 minutes. That means we pull them out, they cool it, and then they're ready to powder coat. So now we're up to making the uh, tensioners, I want to call them. So basically, how I, I make a tube that goes from there to there, uh, and two bolts go in the end, and then inside the tube, I use a nut cert that flares out and holds it in place. Love the grinder. But see, this tube's really thin, so I don't want the nut cert to expand too much and then basically crack the tube. So I've got to turn the pressure down so it just opens up. You can see the nut cert's been flared up in there. Just enough that it doesn't come out. So now we can bolt either side of that. It's a nice little spacer. Okay, so I finished the brackets. They're all powder coated now. You just got to put a nut cert in the top of each one of them. Okay, now we can put the brackets on. Close it! Look at this crash bar, it's like wafer thin. Like on an i30, it's like double skinned. This thing's like nothing, it doesn't weigh much either. Okay, I'm happy with that. So for this, we're gonna use push hose fittings, push lock fittings, whatever you wanna call them. I use these because they look more like the OEM hoses. And the other reason is, uh, <clears throat> when you route them through the engine bay, the rubber hose is easier to flex. It doesn't rub on things, wear through things. It's just nicer to cram through a tight space. <laughs> Okay, so we finished putting the uh, oil cooler in the Yaris. We're pretty happy with how it's fitted up. There's a couple of little changes I'm gonna make for the production version, but it's good enough that we can go and test it. So Hawker, go and try it out. So after a day of testing at Wakefield, uh, in regards to the oil cooler, 
It works. That It's as simple as that. We were seeing temperatures of sort of 115, 120 degrees uh, peak with this thing, and it would always kind of sit over 110 with the oil cooler in today, even after sort of three or four flies, pretty much back to back. I wasn't seeing temperatures, as far as I could tell, any higher than sort of 105, 108 degrees. Two flyers, um, it wouldn't climb over that. Uh, a cool down, it would stabilize back at 100. Two cool downs, it would drop back down to 95 degrees. Um, I pretty much did a fly, then saw a red flag, came in. When I came in, the oil temperature was at 100, um, and then basically it, it was sort of 95, 90 within a couple of minutes of sitting here. So the oil cooler is not only reducing the peak temperature that we're seeing out on track by, I would say 10 degrees as a minimum. Um, I don't want to say any more than that because you know different days, different temperatures, etc. cetera. Um, but the best thing is it then stabilizes the oil back down just below 100 much easier. So overall, if you're going to do track days, and your Yaris, an oil cooler is definitely a good investment. They do run a pretty thin oil from factory. We are getting them pretty warm, so it's more preventative maintenance. So overall, oil cooler gets the thumbs up.